Sampling T-distribution was um, introduced by William Gossett by the pseudonym of student, as you all know. In sampling T-distribution, we standardized scores instead of Z-scores. We use T-scores. The only difference is that we use the standard deviation of the sample. Student T-distribution is a very simple formula. I would say if you put one constant in front, in front that depends on the degree of freedom, then it depends on the standardized T-score as T-square to the power of a function that depends on degree of freedom, DF, degree of freedom plus 1 divided by 2. This is the constant. It depends on gamma function. And gamma function is generalization of factorial function. We will record this degree of freedom in specific cells so that we can simplify this in Excel as gamma logarithm and then exponent because Excel doesn't have gamma function, it has logarithm of gamma function. Square root of degree of freedom times pi is very simple thing to record in Excel. So this is how the student t distribution look like. And this is how it looks like if you put the real constant of degree of freedom. When I say constant, this constant will, will change as we change the size of our samples in the sampling distribution. And you will see that for n equal 30, the normal distribution in this case with blue and the red t distribution almost coincides. Let's do this with Excel. Now, we already know normal distribution, so normal distribution, I have the formula here, norm distribution, then we have the z-score, 0, 1 to be standard normal, and then false to be a discrete normal distribution. Z and t-scores vary from negative 3 to 3, actually t-score, we should get a little bit more, but because of z-scores, I only have negative 3 to 3. The constant is already calculated, and I am uh, reminding you here that this constant is actually uh, a formula with two gamma functions and one root square of h uh, of um, degree of freedom and pi. So to calculate the real formula, let, let me help myself with the real formula here. I need it. I have this constant. equal constant. This constant recorded in P4 should be with dollar sign. Then I continue with something that I want to scaffold. I have something in parentheses to the power of something else also in parentheses. The first thing is in parentheses is 1 plus t square, but my t is this t here, negative 3 and it will change to the power of 2, as we copy the formula, divided by degree of freedom, which is recorded in this cell. And this degree of freedom is a constant, so I will put a dollar sign. That's all for the first part, this part here, 1 plus t squared. Then negative, and degree of freedom plus 1 divided by 2 is recorded in this cell, but I will need the dollar sign again. This is the first value, and this first value, of course, if I make it a little larger to see that it is a long, long digital number between 0 and 1, I will do this from negative 3 to positive 3 with increment of 0 0.1, and this is my new function. I already have it as a um, graphic. I will make it a little smaller because now I will show you the importance of degree of freedom. So red is our t function, blue is the normal distribution. The red function has a little more data under the tails and a little less in the middle, so it's not as compact. Now let's change the degree of freedom. If I make degree of freedom 2, you see, it's a huge difference between the two functions, but 
degree of freedom 2 is almost binomial distribution. Then let's make it 6, for example, and it's become more close distribution 10. Very, very close. And finally, 30. You see, you cannot see the difference. 